Pixar and Disney are back to make you laugh and probably cry in their newest film, Onward. Set in a suburban fantasy world, Onward follows two elf brothers on a quest to find a spell that might bring back their deceased father. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. So I am Ronald and obviously I am still on the couch and I just got finished watching Onward, the new Disney Pixar film directed by Dan Scanlon. Writers are Dan Scanlon, Jason Headley, and Keith Bunin, starring Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer, Lena Waithe, Ali Wong, Tracy Ullman, Wilmer Valderrama and John Ratzenberger. Uh, new Pixar movie. This is, um, you know, I didn't, I saw the previews for this and you saw, um, a lot of teasers and stuff for this a while out. And typically a Pixar movie is going to be uh, a little bit of event. You can almost always expect it to win best animated feature film of the year. Uh, they, they normally set the bar very high for animation in general. Um, and typically, and I, I think in most Oscar season, they are able to benefit from being the popular choice because in most voters, I don't know if they've seen all the movies, but you can almost guarantee that everyone's going to take their family to see the Pixar movie. So, um, with that being said, let's get into the review a little bit. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think, um, sitting at home on the couch, uh, sitting here, you know, in my house in the comfort being able to pause, stop if I wanted to, any of that. I enjoyed the movie. That being said, it did have some problems. Um, it was a little heavy handed and a little predictable, you know, um, I think I mentioned at Sonic, they were doing the thing with the music to draw emotions out of you and, um, just, you know, kind of like hammering the point home point home that this film has a heart. It's lighthearted, but it has a heart, which is, is good for a family film. And I, and I get that, but I kind of, it's one of those things that I feel like they shouldn't have to force. And in this one, you have two brothers that are going on a quest to, uh, basically to find their father, um, and, and find their father in a way. And you find out early on that, um, their father is dead. It's the two of them that live with their mother played by Julia Louis Dreyfus. And, you know, they have a pretty fine life, but you know, he's a regular, the youngest one, Oh, excuse me. <sighs> the youngest one is a 16 year old. So he's still struggling to get used to being in high school and he's w struggling with his identity. And so he's trying to find out if his father maybe had some traits that, um, you know, that he could see in himself. So that's, that's what you're dealing with. You got an older brother who's obsessed with this world as it used to be, because they live in a world that in which there are elves and dragons and pixies and fairies and all those things, but they all in the same world, uh, there's also electricity and cars and technology. So all of that stuff seemed to outpace the quote magic that lived in that world. So the older brother is obsessed with trying to find that magic. So the two of them go on a quest to kind of uh, rebuild their father based on some spell that their father cast uh, early on. You learn all this early in the film. None of the, none of what I said is a spoiler. You can actually learn this in the trailer. Um, that being said, after that, it's a pretty standard quest movie. The two of them, they go on, they go on a quest, they encounter some obstacles, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then you get to the end of the movie. Um, and I won't say whether it's a happy or ending, uh, or happy or sad ending, but just know that with Disney and Pixar and this being a generally predictable movie, it's the ending that you would expect. Um, but that being said, you know, for sitting at home on the couch and sitting down maybe with your family, um, this is, this is a fine movie. It's a fine movie. Um, there was a few times in there where I kind of wish that they would just get to the point. 
you know, like knowing that they were going somewhere and I'm like, just get there, just get there. Like I get it. And, and, uh, they try to put a lot of jokes into this movie, i.e. because this is a world where magic and technology meet, you have like a lot of things that kind of don't, aren't as magical anymore. Like unicorns aren't nearly as magical in the world where technology exists for them anyway. So the unicorns are kind of like treated like raccoons, if anything. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm sitting on the couch. I shouldn't be this tired. Uh, yeah. So it, it, I think those parts for me, they were, they were funny. Um, but you know, I wasn't really laughing out loud throughout this movie. Uh, but there was a lot of uh, mashups going on in there, you know, with, um, there's, and there's a lot of dungeons and dragons references as well in terms of this being a quest and even the game that the older brothers playing at the er earlier on is, um, kind of based in the dungeons, dungeons and dragons universe. So generally it's, it's a good movie. It's generally, it's a good movie. It just, there's nothing that I got excited about while watching this movie. There was a couple times where I felt like it was trying very hard to be a Pixar movie and Pixar's brand is very much like, we are going to give you a silly movie and make you think of things that you have never thought of. And I'm immediately, I'm drawn to something like inside out where they're, they're talking about feelings and like the complexity of both a sad and a, a sad and happy emotion. Like when those two emotions mix, like all that, like that, there's some real complexity in a lot of Pixar movies and this movie, the complexity seemed to be more in making the jokes about the universe, i.e. it being magic and technology meeting. Whereas the story itself was very straightforward of anything kind of reminded me of like avatar where you have a movie where the world is just a fantastic world. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. And it was pretty because even this movie onward, it's beautifully animated, great to look at. But as the story goes, you're just like, this is a standard story. There's nothing about this story that's that's uh, spectacular whatsoever. And you get to the end and there's like, you know, there's emotional parts that happen. And I felt like, you know, there's a couple of times where I'm like, am I going to, am I about to well up with tears? Is that about to happen? But it just, it feels so contrived and expected that it's just like, ah, it's, this is fine. Just let's get it over with already. So it, 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 this is not a movie that I was excited about whatsoever. Um, on the couch, I would give it three stars. I think if I saw it in theaters, it would probably be a two star movie, but sitting on the couch sitting there watching, I was like, yeah, that was fine. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to gas up or put on pants. So yeah, yeah it's a three star movie. If you guys are going to buy it at the house, if you got kids, you want your kids to be quiet for 103 minutes, then yeah, this is a, uh, you want to put on something before they go to bed. This is a, a good something for them to watch. I think a lot of children will really enjoy this movie and all the, the imagery that comes with it. And I think, um, the animation and you know, the few jokes in it are enough or enough for the adults to get through it as well. So yeah, not too much to say about it, but you know, watch it if you want. And with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. To find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studios shows, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the Theater will be back soon. But until then, I'll be here on the couch.